Good morning, happy Wednesday, happy car challenge Wednesday. Oh my goodness, I have another Christmas in July card for you today. And because it's card challenge Wednesday uh, and staying with the Christmas in July theme, what do you guess our colors are? Yep, <laughs> red and green. I'm gonna be making a card using the colors red and green. And, uh, but before we do that, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me yet, my name's Christina Reese. This is Creating with Christina. I come live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on my Facebook page uh, to help card makers by sharing my card tutorials. Now, one more thing before we get started, and that is the paper share. Um, we have a new catalog coming out Tuesday in a week, a holiday catalog, and there's some gorgeous designer paper in there. However, you all probably still have a lot of paper from the annual catalog still that just was released in, what was that, June? Yeah. So uh, I am going to offer a paper share. So instead of buying all the paper, um, all the packs of paper, you can choose to either buy half the pack of papers or a quarter of the pack of papers. So you'll just send the money to me, I order all the paper, I cut it all up, I repackage it, and I send it back to you. All right, all the information is over on my blog, creatingwithchristina.com. Go to shop with me and you will see the paper share link. All right, let's get started. Do, 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 move this over. Yes, here we go. Okay, for our card today, oh, I forgot to put on the comments. Yay, there we go. Let's see who's here this morning. Oh, hasn't come on yet. Okay, takes a minute for it to stream in. Let's get started on this. There they are. Hello, Leanne and Mar uh, Miriam, Stephanie. Good morning, good morning. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I scroll back down. There's hundreds of you here. Wow. Greg and Kim and Jeanette and Debbie. Woo, all my Debbies. I love it. Love it. So we're starting with a traditional base. And this is the Evening Evergreen cardstock. Eight and a half by five and a half. And it's just folded in half, which is four and a quarter. Okay. Now. I also left these post-it notes here for you, all right? So you can write down these measurements if you want. My first layer uh, it, of designer series paper is four by five and a quarter, and of course that's just gonna go right on there like that. Then I have another sheet of designer series paper, and this is three and three eighths by two and seven eighths, and it is put on top of this evergreen paper, which is three and a half by three. Whoops, running out of the camera space. There we go. We have a, a banner one and a quarter inch by four inches, and then I cut the flag tails there, banner tails. And how I did that, you all, I made myself a template, and I keep this in my tool toolbox. All it is is a size, it's one and a quarter by four, but then I folded it in half and I just snipped the two ends off, okay? And now I always have this template. I lay it down on my cardstock and very lightly with a pencil, I mark it and then I just cut it out. So that's a great tip for you all who don't like making banner tails. And then last but not least, we need a scrap for our stocking. All right, so this is all of the cutting you need to do. You ready? Now, let's put it together. First thing is, let's put our DSP on our base. So let me move all this out of the way and take off these things here and get out my adhesive. Mm -hmm. There it is, I already had it out. Greg says, I love templates. Yes, they're very helpful, aren't they? <laughs> there we go. And here we are, just centering that on there like that. Very easy. All right, that was step one. Now, step two, we've got these two pieces here, okay? And I'm going to take these signs off, and we're going to adhere these two together, all right? So flip this over. And we're just, now this is cut, whoa, whew, this is really sticky paper. This is cut very, very small in the sense that, I mean, you only have a sixteenth of an inch border. It's very, very skinny. And the reason I did that was so it didn't, you had the border to kind of frame this DSP, but not so much border that it takes up 
a lot of the card space, all right? And then that's gonna go right there. All right, so far so good. Our flag tail is gonna go right across the middle like this, all right? So, so far so good. I'm not attaching these down yet because we're gonna be doing some dimensionals. I wanna go ahead and get my stocking made, my stocking and my sentiment. So let's move all this over. Okay, we've got our stocking. Um, let me tell you what set we're using. This is the uh, Tidings of Christmas designer paper right here. Let me show you that real quick. And a lot of you have this because you ordered my card kit. By the way, my August card kit, uh, I will be telling you all about it in on August 1st. Okay, and flip it over. Beautiful paper, just really gorgeous Christmas paper. And it's called Tidings of Christmas. And this is the stamp set that it coordinates with. And it's called Tidings and Trimmings with dies that coordinate also. All right, so we have this and this. So I have my stocking and the color red that we're using is Cherry Cobbler. It is extremely dark red, but that's okay. Um, also, this is a photopolymer stamp. Another tip, use a foam pad underneath it. It'll help get a better image stamped, okay? We're gonna put that on there. <sighs> Give it a little hot air to kind of moisten that ink and down we go. And we'll just kind of hold it there for a minute, let the ink kind of absorb into the cardstock, and pull it away, and perfect. Isn't that beautiful? I love this stocking. There's a, a second stocking in this uh, stamp set, so I just used that one, but there's also this lighter one that you can color, or leave white. <laughs> there we go. Okay, or actually, you know what you could also do is stamp this on colored cardstock. All right, we've got that. Let's get this out of the way. And we need to cut this little guy out. So let me move this and this and pull in my handy dandy, tiny cut and embossing machine. Love this thing. It's, a, it's perfect for doing little projects like this. I have my big one over there, but when I just need to cut out one little thing, it's so much easier just to put it on this little guy run it through and here we go come on there we go oops my paper got <laughs> my grid paper kind of got crunched in there all right so this little guy doesn't take up much space he's just perfect for when you need to do just one little cut like that there we go save that for later and I always, even though it's low-tack tape, I'm still very careful pe peeling it off because when it goes through that pressure of the die-cutting machine, it, it could really stick to that paper. All right, there's my cute little stocking. Now, put this away so don't lose it. We need a little more than just a stocking, don't you think? I think we need some spray coming out. We need a cute bow. Let's just jazz this baby up, all right? Let's zoom in a little bit, too. Just a little bit, there we go. Um, and I've already cut those things out to save time. So here are my dies, and I used the berry with the cherry cobbler cardstock, cut that out. Then I used um, this spray of leaves here, but I, instead of green, I did gold. Kind of jazz it up a little. Then these cute little holly leaves, I did those in the dark green. Oh gosh, I can't pick them up. I need tweezers. Where are my tweezers? Here they are. <laughs> there we go. We got that one and that one. And last but not least, I took the gold trim ribbon here and I made a cute little bow. Okay. So I have all my pieces. Oh, and the gold paper I used, I love this gold paper. It's also got rose gold in it. It comes in six by six, but I just love that texture. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, so pretty. Okay, let's put our little stocking together. So let me move all these out of the way so we don't get those messed up. And what, we're, what I do is I'm just gonna fill adhesive back here, okay? And I know that my stocking is gonna hang like this, okay, at the diagonal, all right? And let's have some, there we go. That looks good. Whoops, it stuck to the paper, that's okay. There we go. 
So I have my berries on there. Now I need some gold spray back behind it. So I need some more adhesive. All right, I have adhesive, but going across the red, I want some adhesive there also. All right, and then I'm thinking, let's see, that way? Yeah, let's go that way and make it kind of taller. There we go, come on. All right, so now that's on there, barely. But when I stick it down, I'll put a dimensional there and that'll really hold it still. Okay, so we have that part on. Like I said, we're hanging it at an angle, so we're gonna put our bow right there. And our bow, another tip, here we go, another tip. Blue dots, best thing to put bows on with. Best, best, best thing. And just and another tip is I tied a little piece of string here on my glue dots to keep this waxy paper from going everywhere. And I just can peel that waxy paper back. It moves that string and it, and it reveals the next glue dot. And we want to, let's see which side. This is the back, this is the front. So pull that back, there we go. Press it down, lift it up. And then come over here to the corner of the stocking, press it down. Oops. <laughs> I keep getting that sticky part on the back stuck to my paper. I need my, uh... oh, I've been having the worst time remembering words. I don't know. It's just, I'm, whew. my, the, the mat that I use that nothing sticks to, Lord have mercy. totally gone all right last thing we got these cute little holly things and I do want to put those on with dimensionals but not the big ones you need the mini ones for this so we sell two sizes of dimensionals I thought I had my mini dies in here here they are my mini mini dimensionals we have the mini dimensionals and then we have the regular size dimensionals okay and so when you're ordering them um, they're listed under the same picture but they have uh, you have to read to find the different item numbers all right, my tweezers here. Let me turn my holly leaves over. It's hard to, I mean, they're both pretty much the same, but when you look up close, you can kind of tell which side is the back. The front has the edges kind of going down around the edges, and on the back, it, they're kind of coming up, so. And we're just gonna put one there. Whoops, come here. And one here. I think sprays coming out from behind images or um, in this case a stocking, it just helps add to the image. I mean, putting the stocking on there by itself with a bow would be fine, but doesn't the spray just add something? Now, my holly leaves, I need them up under that bow there. Okay, there we go. And they're gonna kind of layer each other. There we go. And once again, we're stuck to the paper. Have y'all helped me? Silicone mat, thank you, Debbie Parker. Ho, 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 silicone mat. That's what I need to have down here. <laughs> if you all are not familiar with the silicone mat, it's just a little six by six rubber mat that absolutely no adhesive can stick to. It's amazing. And it also can take up, uh, it can, uh, the heat, it can withstand very high temperatures of heat. Isn't our stocking adorable? I love my little stocking. All right, let's put our card together. Oh, we need a sentiment, don't we? All right, let's put, Stocking over here, cards over here. Need our sentiment, my mat. And I know I have it, there it is. Okay, another tip. I've got so many tips for you this morning. When you do not want a gold heat emboss, which this would look just gorgeous with a gold heat emboss, if you just don't want to get out all that stuff, but you want it to kind of blend in with the gold, crumb cake, crumb cake, it works. I'm telling you, kind of looks like gold. I mean, not really, but it works. <laughs> Watch this. Okay, let's ink her up. And put her right there. And there we go. Oh, that didn't get very good. I need to, uh, but anyways, you can see how that kind of looks like gold, doesn't it? But I do want it uh, brighter. And the so when my ink does that, I've got another tip for you. Oh my gosh, I'm just full of tips today. Get out some moisture. And in this case, this is my ink cleaning pad, the uh, Stampin' Scrub or Scrubby, whatever you want to call it. And I'm getting, of course, I'm, okay, you all can't see it all. Hold on, let me, 
zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I'm, I'm cleaning the stamp, but it's also getting the stamp moist, okay? So it'll pick up the ink better. Whoops, where's my ink? There's my ink. Now, whoops, flip her over. It's a good thing we can flip our, oh no. I got a smudge there. Oh Lordy, have mercy. All right, woo, sandy racer. Let's see if I can get it in time. Um, if you all want one of these sandy racers, I sell them uh, through Amazon. And I have a link on my page called Favorite Tools or Must Have Tools, that's it. And this will, like I said, if you get it in time, you can rub it off. You're basically just sanding away the top layer of the card. Okay, that looks pretty good because the sentiment is going to go there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so like I said, this is a mono sandy racer, and I have a link to it in my must have tools link on my shop. All right, here we go. Now, once again, getting it wet, stamping it up. Merry and bright. Now, watch the difference. Wow, what a difference. All right, so here's the original. I mean, I'm sorry, here's the corrected one. Here's the original. All right, see how it was kind of faded there? But when I got my uh, stamp kind of moist, it got a good, clean uh, coverage of ink. So another tip, lots of tips. All right, we're almost done. This goes there. Close up the sink so I don't get it all over everything, like my hands. And also keep a moist wipe next to you so if you get ink on your fingers, you don't smudge your card like I just did. Ah. Okay, now let's put our card together. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. So we are going to, and you don't want it too thick if you're putting it in the mail. So you kind of have to remember that. Your card should only be a quarter inch thick or it can't go through the... Uh, machines, the mail sorting machines, and it'll clog it, stop it, and then they'll just return it back to you. They won't let it go through. All right, um, so I'm thinking I want this up a little bit, and then I'm going to put my tag right on top. Now, I could put this down flat and move up the tag. Either way looks great, but I definitely want to pop my stocking up. So I'm going to pop this up and then lay the banner flat. Like I said, if you're not mailing it, then just put dimensionals on everything. <laughs> That's what I say. Just make everything pop. All right, there we go. And another trick to pull off the bags, get a piercing tool and just stab and pull, stab and pull, stab and pull, stab and pull. There we go. Oh, and this goes long ways, okay? So, and I also kind of have it higher to the top than to the bottom. That's just, um, remember art design, you work in thirds. Everything is chopped up into nine, a uh, nine grid thing. So you have the top, the middle, the bottom, the left, the middle, the right. Okay. So I've put this in the upper third of the card. Okay. Uh, banner. Now, one thing is, uh, when I flipped it over, can y'all see my pencil marks where I marked it to cut the tag? I need to erase those. So let me get this eraser. On the other side of the sand eraser is just a white pencil eraser. And I'm just gonna erase those. There we go. Make sure the other side looks good. Yep. Okay, and all the erasings ever out of the way. Oh yeah, she looks really nice now. And put some adhesive on here. Oops, come on. And we're gonna put that right there. And it's four inches, so you can, you know that the red is four inches, so you know where to line it up. Okay, and then finally, let's put some dimensionals on the back of this and put it over the sprig there so it's not gonna go anywhere. And one at the bottom. Well, wait a minute. I got to make sure I'm. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's going right there. Yeah. Don't want to go too far off the stocking. You don't want it down there. All right. And. Okay. All right. Presto. Voila. 
Ta da! So pretty. Christmas in July! Don't you love this? Isn't it pretty? It is very pretty. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with with your color challenge. Oh, speaking of challenges, I totally forgot to spin for last week. <sighs> I had uh, 13 of you join uh, with the color, with the um, challenge last week. The challenge last week was trees. Y'all came up with some really pretty trees. Let's do some spinning. Okay, y'all can't see my computer anymore. I rearranged my craft room if you saw that on my page. But I uh, do have the spinner set up. Number 12. So now what I do is I go over to my Facebook page and I count down from the top to number 12. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Vicki! Vicki! Oh my gosh, I'm not even going to try to say your last name, Vicki. <laughs> it starts with an R and has a ski on the end, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a Radajeski, I think. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations, Vicki. I'll be sending you a prize uh, for winning our challenge this week. Cannot wait to see what you guys create for your red and green. Don't forget, I have a paper share going on. So, uh, creatingwithchristina.com right there. Um, that's it. You guys have a blessed Wednesday. I'll be back here Friday for Fun Fold Friday. And uh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Bye, you guys.